Good morning, good morning. What's going on, everybody? It is uh, good morning, good morning. What's morning, going on? The, where you go? Ding, ding. Is, the market uh, is now morning, open. Morning, morning. Go- and here we are off to the races. So we'll see what happens right now. The market is seemingly red. Put uh, Puts appear to be the obvious play, but obviously we are not going to go all into puts just yet until we figure out where this market is going. Big gap down from the 445.58 level. Qs are uh, green at the moment. Nasdaq had this little sell-off after bouncing off this four after the fifteen zero six one level, and then the uh, futures ripped all the way down to four 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 one. Computers came on, bought this baby back up, and now we're back up to forty four fifty. We'll see how this day shakes out. I'm not going to be too bearish just yet. Maybe into the end of the nice week, maybe maybe into the end of the week, but at the moment I'm going to probably be banking my hat on a sideways chop in through their next two days. So let's get it. What's up, Corporal? How you doing, Henny? How you doing? My call's about to get destroyed. Just be on the lookout. Afghanistan is appearingly becoming a Charlie Foxtrot. Uh, we'll see how the Middle East starts to play out here and see how what the impact it does have on the markets because it is starting to get a little dicey over there. A little dicey. I got 44463 here on SPY. Uh, the Qs are Big Green Candle VIX. Is popped up to 1707 after rejecting 1525 up here on Friday. Uh, bonds, which I'll be looking at closely, are starting to straight line rocket up. What's up, Davis? How you doing? Jim, how you doing? Kremlin, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, Corporal. I love it. I love it. All right, red candles trading sideways right now. We'll see this thing's flipping back and forth. Red, green, not too much movement. Birthday week. What's up, Dano? Happy birthday. Let's hope you get a little profits for your birthday. I already got one win under my belt this morning. I got 22% on some futures puts this morning. Posted it in the OM Calls puts room. So it's a great way to start the morning. It's a great way to start the week. Hopefully we can get get on a little action. Hope y'all watched that video I posted yesterday. There's a little update to my system. I know everyone's been asking what my returns have been, how the system's doing. Uh, so there you go. That's every single trade I posted in the Discord, uh, not counting the, uh, st- the straddles. I'll update for y'all, so I hope you enjoy that video. Take a look at it if you haven't watched it. All right, so right now, Qs are, well, big green candle on the Qs here. NASDAQ is getting some big buying buy-ups here, while the futures are still red at the moment, flipping back and forth. Uh, maybe we'll get a gap fill this morning, up to the top before d- dumping. We'll see. We'll see. Is it pre-market data in TV and digital charged? If you want it live, yes, it is, A-Road. Yes, it is. Uh, I pay eight bucks, I believe. Can you post a clean log with the position size column, the one posted? Yeah, I can do that, Justin, for sure. Let me get through uh, the morning sesh here, and I'll post it for you. I'm going to make a note so I don't forget that. Post trade log with position sizes. What's up, Lee Rat? How you doing? 
Hey, no problem, Ethan. Yeah, I'm glad I'm, I appreciate that. Yeah, transparency is, is what it's about. If y'all want to learn how to do this, I got to be transparent. So, a couple of red candles form a three minute chart right here. EMAs are stacked to the downside from pre market activity. Big sell off coming here on uh, SPY. What's up, Ace? How you doing, buddy? Julie, how you doing? Shaking and baking. Shaking and baking. 44474 to 44423 50 cent reading so far. We'll see if this thing drives out and uh, go from there. Nice, nice, big, red, healthy candles. I love it. I love it. I'm ready to see a wash, man. I'm ready to see to wash this thing out. Let's get it. Tech is rolling over. Bonds are climbing. What's the VIX doing, baby? VIX wants to turn up. Let's get turned. I'm ready for that 50 play. Me too, Ace. Me too. I'm going to be careful on this 50. When we touch the 50 this time, you got to be very diligent to make sure we stop at the 50 and we don't have what happened in October and September. So make sure we stop at the 50 like we've been doing and then bounce. Once we get that bounce, I'm going all in, baby. All in's a relative term. Y'all know what I mean. 44413. Yeah, <laughs> dirty, dusty. Get out of here with that dirtiness. Known to be no one. Hope everyone had a great weekend, for sure. Red candles abound right now. Tech sector's nice and green. NASDAQ's nice and green. SPY's getting sold. Financial sector's getting whooped. Bonds are spiking, baby. Bonds are spiking. If y'all noticed, the uh, $5 tier is now closed. We reached the limit of 500 people. So now we're on to the uh, onward and forth with the $10 tier. So tell your friends. Let's join the community. Let's make this thing grow. And let's learn how to trade together, baby. What premium is looking at today? I am looking at the uh, Friday expiration. I know, it, I know I'm saying Friday because it's different. Like I know different uh, different brokers show this differently, but mine says August 21st because it's the mid it's the mid mid month expirations, which is Friday. So I'm doing the Friday expirations. Um, four four two puts, four four six calls. Yeah, for sure. Right now, let's look at the applied volatility on these babies. Implied volatility is nine cents. Oh, it's higher than last week. It's much higher than last week. I will take it, baby. Implied volatility on puts. Whoa, yeah, much higher on the on the the puts are much higher. Implied volatility, so I like it. I like it. I'm looking at the four four two puts for Friday expirations. Let me figure out the SPX, the SPXs, SPX. Let's see here. Uh, same thing as the 21st. That would help if I actually, I'm actually looking at SPX. Forty-four four seven implied volatility delta is there. Good, good. Forty-four thirties. And let's look at 4470s. Not much volume, but 4430s, 4470s. SPX. Nice, a little 15 chaos in Bitcoin. Well done, Viracoca. Yep, 20th. Yep, there you go. It says August 21st because it's 2021. It's a mid-month contract, but they're actually, the date is 20th. It just, E-Trade doesn't do a very good job of making that obvious.
Lost the wallet and got some wallet search to brute force it. Bought for three. Nice, dude. That's like one of those. I bet that dude that had two hundred seventy million wish he could do that. I wish I held my my uh, held on to my crypto that I had. What's up, TJ? How you doing? Right now we are waiting for Spy to bounce up towards and then towards the fifty SMA and load up on puts. Uh, negative, 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 negative. Yeah, so. When I say the 50 SMA, I'm looking at the one-year chart, which your one year is probably 435, 436 right now. So the 50 SMA. So when we come down to that 50 on the one-year chart, then I'll look at buying some long-dated calls, three-week dated calls, and ride that baby up. But not until then. Right now, I'm waiting to see this thing shake and bake. Uh, I'm not taking any positions just yet. I've got puts loaded up, but uh, no positions. I'm just waiting to see how this goes. Tech sector is pretty strong. I would expect this thing to come back down. Chinese markets are pretty heavy right now in terms of tech. Red line, yep, the 50 SMA, the simple moving average, not the exponential. Simple is the red line. But I only really use that on the one on the one year chart, not the daily. What would it take for me to hold puts overnight? I will consider doing that uh, when we get to that point. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, like, I'm looking at the overall market sentiment, and it's going to happen quick. Like we'll have a big breakdown, and we'll see that happen. I'll consider doing that here, uh, maybe Wednesday or Thursday if we start to get that downturn. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe today. Who knows? Like I'm. I'm. I like. I don't like to form biases on bias on Sunday and Monday, because that's what like the new. That's a new slate. The week likes to show the to show its colors, you know, sometime mid Monday and see how it's going. So I'm not, I don't like to form that too early. I'm gonna let this thing shake out, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's take a look at the futures now. Futures are still hanging out at the bottom. NASDAQ is getting a little spike, a little red right there. Bonds, look at that straight line up, baby. Straight line up as, a future, as the financial sector's down. Tech sector's up. Let's look at that. Material sector's getting beat. Energy sector, down. Let's look at, uh, I'm going to switch these up here. XLV is sideways right now. That's a healthcare sector. Keep a lookout for that. <clears throat> all right so it is 9 42 we got about 20 minutes or so until the morning ranges are set currently we've got 44474 44382 which is just shy of a dollar range i like it that's a good little range as long as we play them let's see if this thing continues to shake out to the downside vix hovering sideways in the 17 uh mid 17s xlf is there not too, too much action so far. Yeah, we do have this little downside here, but it's not egregious. We're letting things play out. Uh, I don't know, John. I don't know about that one. Will uh, TD Ameritrade allow you to trade options pre-market? All I can tell you is about E-Trade. You do have to have a futures account. I will tell you that. You have to apply for a futures account, which only takes a few minutes. And uh, yeah, you can trade options. You can trade options on futures. This coffee is strong. Tastes like profits.
Can you do that from the desktop top app? I I don't use I don't use eTrade Pro. I use e Power eTrade. eTrade Pro is the software. Power eTrade is the web based uh, system. I use Power eTrade. I tried using the Pro eTrade. It's like I feel like they designed it back in 1996 and then they stopped. They're like, hey, this is a good enough for the next 30 years. Let's just keep it here. So I don't use the Power eTrade Pro. All right, so bouncing off the 8 EMA three-minute chart, let's go to the 5. We are uh, right below VWAP and the 8 on the 5-minute. Hey, you nice little red candles here on the Qs as it continues to roll over. Red candles here on futures. The bonds are still spiking. VIX is a little bit of green, a little bit of green. I miss what DT you're trading. Uh, I'm trading the Friday DTEs. Friday DTEs. I'm saying Friday because they're different for different because the way it's priced or way it's 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 shown, it's different for each broker. But yeah, Friday DTEs. All right, this thing, you got the futures dipping. You got the VIX about to pump. You got TLTs pumping up. Let's look at the financial sectors rolling. Nice, green, and heavy. Look at that, pumping. So this is starting to get dicey here. So be on the lookout if we continue to have this weakness here because we don't have much support. We don't have much support here until this 443 level. So just be on the lookout. Sweet. You got me on the TV, Julie. Nice. Nice. Well, luckily it's not video with my face because these high def TVs would not do me any justice. Same as last month around this time. Yeah. If you look at July 19th, that's when we got that bounce. So about July 12th ish, we started that downturn. July 19th, we bounced on the 50 and then we rocketed for the next few weeks. So here we are now, baby. We're right on schedule. If we continue on down, we're right on schedule. All right, futures broke that 441 level down to 4439 as the Qs rolled over as well. Look at the NASDAQ getting a little green after that nice big selling volume here. Spies down. Looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. Yeah, I love those. That's where you make that money. You got it. You play. It's like you play conservative. For three weeks out of the month, and then for one month, you let it fly, baby. And that's where you make your money, as long as you're smart. So, you got to do that, man. You got to know when to hold them, when to fold them, and uh, when to play them. So, 
I know that's cliche with the song, but hey, it's true. It's very true. You got to know when to play it. You got to know when to turn it on, when to turn it off. The past few weeks, it's been like turn. I've been turning it off, taking the risk off the table, haven't really made too many trades, and I'm ready to start ramping that up. Like last July, man, July we raged. All right, let's watch this here as the futures are green right now at the bottom. Uh, TLT has got some little red action at the top. Three minute chart right now. We're well below the EMAs coming up as the EMAs are stacked to the downside and the Qs are rolling over hard now. Look at the NASDAQ it's getting smoked and the futures are rolling over as well. Something like that, like, yeah. It all, it's all, you know, it, it's all relative because as the market goes higher, the percentage gains get get uh, smaller and smaller. So you gotta, you gotta, it's all relative. It appears to be a little buy-up action at this level. We are now got a dollar thirty on the morning session ranges, which is pretty significant. I love it. We'll see if they play out, or do we have a trend down day, baby? Or do we have a trend down day? Nice big red on the NASDAQ here. Look at that. Getting smoked on the tech. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. No, I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Uh, I don't think it'll be a trend down, Dad. I just think we have a little morning weakness. I do think it'll be heavier, but not necessarily a trend down. Uh, maybe, well, I don't know. It depends what your def definition of trend down is. But I think there will be a little heavier, but I don't think we're going to have a smoke down session day here. Look at that. NASDAQ still crashing. Uh, futures are still down red here as SPY is down to 443.27. VIX is up to 1763, past the 1754 pivot. The bonds are still way up there, but have a little red action right now. Financial sector looks like it appears to get in a little bit of green at the bottom. Yeah, my futures from this morning is now 1350. That would have been nice. That would have been nice. All right, so this session range is 44474 and 44324, which is a dollar and a half. That's a big old range. It's a big old range. 853, we still have 12 minutes till the morning sessions are set. Nice, nice beaver terror. Do you think the Afghan stuff will put us down? Uh, I think, well, you have to realize that the obvious stuff doesn't always happen. If the obvious events like that always manifested in the market, it'd be easy to play puts and calls when it needs to be. But unless it's obvious, like coronavirus back in 2020, that was obvious. But these things don't always play out. 
and uh, they're not always connected. And there's always a reason why it would rocket on news like this. So defense sector will rocket or something like that. So you got to be careful playing to the news events just like that. You have to let them kind of manifest and then play your side. What situations do you hold past 20%? If I see volume, I'll let that thing fly. Nice, A. Eh, Davis? Quick 200 bucks. Blank Words says, I'm hoping to become smart at least. Uh, WSB is where I got into investing. Didn't do me too well. That's okay. I don't mind you getting started from WSB. I, I, you know, I'm actually quite grateful for Wall Street Bets because it brought a lot of new people into the market, a lot of new interest. But unfortunately, it perpetuated a lot of bad ideas. And I'm here to undo those bad ideas and teach you the real world about investing. <clears throat> it's not all rainbows and unicorns and profits and tendies or whatever they call it. It's all about learning how to do this properly for the long term. I don't care about profits for the week or for the quarter. I care about profits for the decade. Show me your profit statement for a decade and I'll tell you if you've made it or not. Red Candles here on SPY. NASDAQ is getting dumped again. Dumped like a bad date in high school. VIX is pumped up here, right here. Qs are still rolling over. And let's see if the bonds are green again as uh, SPY continues to fall. Sweet, sassy, mo lassie. Yeah, Corporal, I'll get that for you. I'll uh, see what volume analysis video explain. There's a, there's a few videos of trades that I made that's based on the volume profile. So I wouldn't expect that, Scroon. It's, there's not always going to be a V recovery. So play what you see, not what you hope to see. Not always, Brandon. I don't always wait to see to the four morning range to be set. Sometimes I'll play earlier. Uh, be, this being Monday, I, was, I wasn't too crazy on jumping in a put pretty soon. Uh, I kind of want to let things shake and then go from there. What's up, Professor Dave? How you doing? I got four four two fifty four as the next support, and we're uh, we're heading on down that way. Pretty good, Professor Dave. Pretty good. We're right at this, uh, we get 9 o'clock, it's 9 o'clock Eastern, uh, 10 o'clock, or not 10, not 10 o'clock Central, uh, Eastern, 9 o'clock Central. We're kind of at this level here, we're starting to base, we got a few green candles flipping back and forth, green, red, we're at, uh, what, bottomed out at 44309. We're kind of in no man's land, there's not really too much except this 44254 level, which is the next support. We'll see how this thing reacts as Q's continues to on down as the VIX is way up here at 1765. I mean, there's not anything specific I look for in terms of news. I just, I mean, I, whatever the market has, like, I just look around. I just look around and, uh, I kind of like most of it's, most of it's filler. It's crap. You know, people think that every little news event is going to move the markets and it's just not most, most things you see are non events or they're already dealt with. You have to realize the people behind the scenes, the, you know, the lobbyists, the hedge funds, the market makers, all those people, they know about all this crap before we do. So when we see it on the news, it's pretty much already dealt with and manifested in the market. Now, if you've got a big event, a global event, obviously that is different, but I'm talking about the little minuscule stuff you see on a daily basis. If World War III breaks out in the Middle East between you know Russia, China, us, 
then obviously that's going to move the markets. But if you've got something that's already been, you know, been talked about and mentioned, it's already been planned for. All right, let's see. VIX is red rolling over XLF. Bouncing off the eight right here, it appears. Let's take a look at the other sectors here. XLK, all pretty much seem to be doing the same thing here. Healthcare sector is getting bought up. Bonds are right at the top of this range there, NASDAQ. I'll be watching the 8MA on the five-minute chart closely as well. That appears to be a good... Uh, a good resistance on trend days to the downside and upside. All right. XLF has got a little red here, and we're kind of hovering out at the bottom of this 44325 range. I want to kind of zoom out a little bit to show you all the larger time frames, get in the habit of looking at longer, longer time frames. Just because you're a day trader doesn't mean you don't look at longer time frames. So on the six month chart, we blew through all the EMAs down here on the 50 SMA. On the six month, let's go to the one year to show you that, what this looks like. On the one year, we've got this big gap down. Uh, breaking right now, that 44269 would be a very bearish level and also a key support level as we go through the eight. Right now, as it looks, the 50 would be approximately this 437 level if we just came on back down after a few days. Uh, 436, mid 435 level would be the 50 if we came all the way back down to this, which we do, see here? And we're ready to do it. Like we're nearing that point where it, uh, we're heading to that time. So three minute chart on SPY, auto adjust this. Let's get zoom out of touch. Getting there, Sam. I don't use. I don't like to use that word, but uh, you know, it's to the point where just the oscillation is coming. Go to the five minute. Let's watch this price right here. Watch four four three, like this four four three seven five seven six level. See if it rejects this eight EMA on the five minute chart. Thanks, it's just Max. I appreciate that. Yeah, if you are new to the channel, like and subscribe. Hit that like button. It helps us grow. It helps us grow. Helps more people see this channel, so we can undo 
undo the facade of investing that Wall Street Bets has pumped into people's brains. Nice, great talk shop. I like the theory. All right, let's look at TLT. Nice sell-off there on TLT. The VIX coming down as well. Q's is down, still down here at SPY. Watching that five-minute EMA on the on the eight on the uh, the five-minute EMA on SPY. Nasdaq still red at the bottom here as the futures are popping on up. Look at that. Look at SPY right on the 8 EMA. That's what I was waiting for. Five minute chart, 8 EMA. It always rejects it on trend days. The YouTube stream is about three to four seconds delayed. So if you are on, if you are counting on the prices on the YouTube, uh, just be cautious of that. Just be cautious of that. Uh, do I think we're trend down yet? I don't. I don't think. I, I don't know yet. Like I, I don't want to make that bias, but I'm just watching for signs that it is going to be a trend day. If we continue to reject the eight EMA and the five minute chart, that is indicative of a trend day. I'm updating my puts to forty four hundred, by the way, instead of forty four thirty on the uh, SPX. <laughs> You're looking forward to being laid off. That's funny, Corporal. That's funny. When do the SPX puts expire? Uh, these are the, my expiration on these is Friday, so the twentieth. All right. So the eight EMA. So the eight EMA is the blue line. When we have a trend day up or down on down days, it usually, it usually rejects the eight all the way down. It just comes up, rejects the eight, comes up, rejects the eight. On up days, it bounces off the eight all the way up. So I'll be watching this ADMA, which we just popped through it. So 
uh, trend day doesn't necessarily look like it's going to happen. Looks like it's going to have just recovery, and then we'll maybe play a range day. We'll see. It's it's early yet. It's early yet. Ranges are set though. There's the range. Uh, watch all my, uh, watch all the videos. I do, I, I try to go through everything I use, all the indicators I use. I think there's like six or seven good videos. And then volume price analysis book is a great book to read. If you'll read that book, watch those videos. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to walk through as much as I can. All right, let's watch this. Tech sector is still selling off as the futures are up here. They're approaching the 21 EMA in the five minute chart. Let's watch the bonds. A little green on the bonds here. I'll be watching this closely for another reversal to enter some puts in the event that we break down. I got 870, 890 on the bid ask on these things. VIX is right down here on the 34 EMA right now, which will be bounced off previously. Let's see, XLF is red, 21. Qs are down again. NASDAQ's down. I got 870 on the bid, 880 on the ask, $9 on the ask, 890 on the ask. What's so coming around? I'll be watching here closely. What's it gonna do? Qs are down. SPY is right here. I'm going to go to the three minute, right on the 34 on the three minute. NASDAQ falling hard. Futures are there. VIX is green again. Eight sixty. There's eight seventy. There's eight forty. Let's see. Just want to be careful here. NASDAQ's getting smoked. Look at that. Straight line down for NASDAQ still. All right, big buy up here on the futures. XLF is bright green. Bonds are down here as well. VIX are still falling through here, 1711. Are the Fs holding up SPY? No, I mean, the, the market is just being bought up right now. I know the futures are, are quite green right now. The financial sector is just helping it out as tech is just rolling over straight down straight down i think it's going to cause some weakness here in spy though because eventually if uh, xlf does get some red to it with as heavy as let me look at that i mean it's just getting this tech sector is getting killed uh spy is going to roll with it i'll be watching this vix area very closely right now we're at 1713 which is back inside this range we're at the 34 EMA in the three minute chart, the five minute, we're at here the 21.
Look at that. This NASDAQ is just getting whooped. Whooped. All right, let's take a look. Uh, man, look at that. Still going down. That's good. The futures are hovering out right here. XLF is hovering right here. Well, XLF is getting spiked still. So a lot of money flowing back into the financial sector now as bonds are not really selling off too hard here. So let's watch out for this. All right, so a little weakness here. NASDAQ is still down. Futures are red. VIX is about to spike here. TLT is a little red still. I got 8, 880, 890 on the bid ask on these puts. SPY is big red. Looking, looking, looking. I mean, it's not necessarily supported, Michael. You just have to watch. You just have to watch. Ooh, stand by. Vic's popping. Views are just absolutely just getting destroyed. XLK is down. VIX is popping up green here. I got a little gap up, a tiny little gap up there, green candle. <clears throat> that candle immediately got bought up here. Look at all that selling volume on the NASDAQ. Just getting roasted right now. Watching the volume here. <clears throat> so the 15 minute chart we're definitely bouncing lower uh, it looks super bullish on the on the bearish I'm sorry on the 15 minute five minute three minutes still down This is a key level here. This is a key level, man. Q is still down. Look at that.
All right, here we go. So the Q's still down. NASDAQ is super red as well. NASDAQ or uh, futures are coming down to this key support level as the VIX is gapping up here. And bonds are uh, hovering out right there. All right, so it is uh, 9.19 my time, 10.19. Uh, we're coming back down to this range as things are looking super, super heavy. NASDAQ has just been straight line down. Uh, XLK is down as well. XLF is at the top. If, Na if, XLF, if XLF breaks, if the financial sector breaks, man, it's going to be it's going to be hairy. So. And there we go. So there the future's breaking down. Uh, NASDAQ has still got this green right there. Down right back down to the range. Double gap down. All right, see if we get a bounce off of that bottom. It is uh, 922 now central, 10, 1022 eastern. All right, so with this weakness, with this weakness here, now we start to get some confirmatory action here. So on this five minute, with as, wet, as heavy as this thing is, if he comes off and rejects this, like not quite the 34 again, then you can know where you can start playing some, some plays. Let's take a look at XLF. It's starting to turn red here. Q's got this little green right there, XLK. NASDAQ is still down with a little green candle, and uh, futures are right at this key level, this 443 or 4435 level. <clears throat> All 
All right, here's the one month chart. There is the SPY as it continues to roll over. Uh, right here is, this was Friday, so we kind of have this ramp up all the way from July 19th. This is July 19th here. And we get this big old ramp up, a little bit of dip, and then just onward and upward to 44594, uh, I think the high is. <clears throat> There's the cues. Yeah, the healthcare sector is definitely green. It's getting bought. Uh, energy is kind of just playing this little range here. Materials is middle of the rare range. Financial sector is uh, right at the top. And of course, the weakness is in tech right now as it continues, continues to be weak. Because the August, the August, uh, this it's a mid month option, so it's going to show only the uh, the month and not the day on there, unfortunately. So just make sure you're choosing the right one. All right, Nasdaq's dipping again. Futures are right at the bottom. Key point right here. VIX is green. Qs are up. Spy is right there. The AM is AM session. The PM is the afternoon session. I'm doing the August 21st PM. So don't do the, I'm not doing the AM at least. I'm not doing the, I'm doing the PM. All right. Still hovering right here at the bottom. Got this little red. We're at the bottom of this range. 44315. Oh, all right, there we go. Pop through, so careful here. Be careful here. I got 1160. I got 1150 on these puts. Let's see. You get the bid ask. Uh, NASDAQ is red. Kind of wants to dump again. Let's see what bonds are going to do. VIX is just bouncing up again. If we break this 1769 and go higher, uh, we'll see what's happening here. NASDAQ is still red. This could be a super down day right now. 1140, 1150. This thing wants to go down. We bounce off this 44267 level 
on Friday. VIX is up here. Just got to be careful here. I'm in puts here. Dang it. Okay. Didn't get that. Wow, look at that. Eleven sixty was that couldn't even get that in there. Ten ninety. Wow, look at that. So Nasdaq is down red. That, look at that bounce right off of that 4432. I couldn't even get in that thing. I tried to get that limit order and it just blasted right up. So that, that's what happens. So that's what the computers like to do. They like to pop, pop this down, blow you out, and then completely buy that thing up. So Qs are red right now as the tech sector, financial sector is greening up. XLK is coming down right there and XLV is popping up. Bonds are hovering still not much moving here. So we've obviously reached the support zone on the futures. Spy, that 44260 level, they were going to tank it and then buy it back up here. So that's what you got to watch out for. That's what, like, when you when you come out of the bottom of the range, that's why you got to wait for confirmation. I almost got hosed there. You got to wait for the confirmation because they throw it, they, they hover it down there, they throw it down, and then they buy it up once you hit that support. It hit that thing. So spy right here, let's see. Right, 44267 was that level I was looking at. Because look, it rejected it there, it rejected it there, and it didn't quite get there, and I thought they were going to tank it, and then they bought it back up. Just be careful. We'll see if we, we, let's see if we reject back down. I've got my put order up. Look at that big, the biggest buying volume of the day on the queues, but that candle got wicked out here. VIX rejected that 17 up level XLF, like that candle got sold off. Well, let's just be cautious here. Yeah, definitely don't do market orders for sure. Definitely don't do market orders. If you did a market order right there, you would have got a terrible fill. You would have got a dollar off fill on that. All right, so look, we had this big buying volume, barely any movement. Q, same thing. Look, biggest volume by far. No movement. So the sellers are still here to stay. Sellers are still here to stay. Spy, right there. I'm going to go to the five minute. There's a five minute right here on the ADMA head of the downside. <clears throat> so there's the five minute coming off the eight to the downside, still selling off here as the NASDAQ looks bearish still. It can't, the buyers just can't come in and bring this up. So come up to the eight, watch this. I'd love it, Ezekiel. I'd love it.
All right, so look at that big selling volume coming in here <clears throat> on the futures. NASDAQ are still down, but it can't get bought up. SPY is still down here. So I do not like the way this is getting bought up here. I want to see a breakdown. We're at the bottom of the range, so this is a crucial, crucial point. Crucial, crucial point. <clears throat> All right, Spy. Hey, Green Candle, watch the 8 EMA here. Five-minute chart. See if it blows through that. NASDAQ's there. Futures are still green right here, XLF. All right, so watch this. Right now, it's 50-50. I mean, we need to see if we get a rejection or we come back down. So let's take a look at the spy. I got five minute uh, squeeze momentum is definitely bearish. We have the big vo buying volume here, but no movement. So definitely everything looks bearish. Tech is getting look at Tesla. Wow, down four point seven percent, getting killed. Uh, I know like there was some new EV stuff over there in China. They're getting they're getting wrecked. Nasdaq is getting wrecked. We've been hovering out here for a few minutes here. Let's see if this thing gets popped up. Yep, see that right here, this, this is when you start getting that trend day stuff. If we keep rejecting, now we're at the bottom of the range. And now we can reject and pop down, and then we break supports. And when we break supports is when you really get the flush. So that's what we need to look for. Are we going to come back up to the middle of the range, top of the range, or are we going to flush down? And we're at that decision point right now. All right, so VIX watching that coming down. They've been using that 50 right below the 34 during the day for support to bounce off of. Spies here. I'm still leaning towards puts. I'm not really ready to jump on the call wagon here. I got my puts. I put uh, order form still pulled up here. 1010 on the mids right now, 990, 1005. As the Qs are still staying down, VIX are still rolling over there. XLF is still popping up. So bonds not really doing too much. There's not really much action in the bonds, which is indicative of kind of a chop day. So we'll see uh, how this plays out here. Next few minutes, I'm watching to see how this reacts. We're going to come back up. 
or we're going to jump down and flush. Yeah, spy is coming down, but we'll see. We had this nice little bullish buy up here, rejected 21. Uh, they tried to smoke us out, man. They dropped that big red candle on us and then immediately bought it up on our, under decent volume here. So uh, right now we are currently at the 8 EMA right there on the futures, five minute. NASDAQ's not really going anywhere since uh, 10, 15 central. So about 25 minutes, it's been hovering right here in this little range. Qs are still there. VIX is coming down to 21. XLF is coming back up. Spy through the twenty-four, through the five minute. We have this big, massive buying volume, and it didn't move, so it's not looking bullish. Right now, the Nasdaq's are getting getting ready to roll over again. It's actually rolling over now. Uh, VIX is got to the twenty one. Spy is at the ADMA right here. Nasdaq. Watch the futures are green, but not barely. This thing looks like it wants to dump. It looks like it wants to dump. Let's watch out right here. XLF coming back to the top of their session highs, which is this 38, uh, 43 level. Spy still can't hold a green candle. NASDAQ is still on the downtrend. Looking heavy. So I talked about this last week. When you come to a range and you hover there and the buyers keep coming, but they won't bring it up, then you realize what's going to happen. Like up here, when I take a when I take a call, like when it rocks up and then hovers here and I take a call and it goes higher, it's because we sit there for like an hour and just wick out to the downside and then the buyers step in and go because the seller just can't take it down. Here, it kind of looks like the same thing. We're stuck to the bottom of the range. The buyers just can't step in. They did step in. It couldn't move it at all because there's too many sellers here. So that's why it's, I've got leaning towards the puts where we're just going to hover here for a little bit and then it's going to just smoke out to the downside, especially with tech sector being this week. There's not any rotation out of the bonds. It's still hovering way up here after this nice climb. So it's still looking bearish to me. I just want to see confirmation that we're coming down.
Why is Red directing this ADMA here five minute? All right, so Q's tech sector still is heading down. Uh, not much going on here in terms of everything else. XLF is here. VIX wants to get that bounce off that 34. Man, this thing looks dumpy. <clears throat> Switching to three minute NASDAQ is there. Want to see a bounce in the VIX as the bonds start heading up. I got 1030, 1040 bid ask on these puts. Yeah, 442s are fine. 442s are fine. All right, VIX has popped through and then bounced back up. So they popped through the 34 like I have a few times and now popped back up here. No, they didn't. Never mind. Green candle's right there. So it's still 1730, still hovering just a shy above where it popped down below there. Futures are green, big green, but no volume. Big green here on the tech, but still no volume. No, I don't do I don't do any pattern trading, Sean. I think it's too subjective. Oh, your broker didn't close your limit? Yeah, I would email. That sucks, man. Which broker do you use?
All right, little green on the VIX. Bonds is still hovering right here. Uh, yeah, it would. So, because we're not really bouncing or falling, we're just hovering right here. Hovering right here. So, in my opinion, this looks like it's going to dump because when you've got to the downside here and just nothing will buy it up, even if you have large buying volume, it still won't get bought up. There's too, there's too many, that tells me there's too many sellers here. When you have a lot of buyers come in and the price doesn't move, what does that tell you? I mean, that tells me there's still too many sellers in the market. So, I just think it looks like it's going to come on back down. There's Q's. Nice red candle here on Q's. Not much volume, though. VIX is going to get a bounce here. Bonds are there. SPY is coming down. Big red candle here on the NASDAQ. VIX look bounce off the same level again. Again. But another bout, another buy up here. Look at that. The futures get bought right at this level. Spy again gets bought up in this level. It's 442.80 level. This is so key right here, man. This is so key. Oh, I'm definitely playing it. I'm just waiting for a move. I'm just waiting for it. This has got this has got dump city written all over it. So we'll see. Like that's why I'm not. That's why I'm not taking a put right now because we could reject and go higher. But right now, the way this thing is just clinging to the bottom here, and buyers just can't take it up. This has the look of this, 
and uh, we will see how that plays out. Oh, you're welcome, Ezekiel. Glad you like that spreadsheet. Not yet, Chris. Working on it. That yellow dot is the session ranges. Red candle here on spy. Big red candle here. VIX is spiking. I got 1090, 1105 on the bid ask here on SPX. Oh man, this thing wants to dip. I got 1080, there's 1070, 1080. Yeah, it looks super weak for sure. Super weak, super weak. What's up, Lee Rat? <clears throat> Yeah, it is a buy zone because it's rejected it twice now. So we're going to see if we break did the sellers overcome that buy zone and drop it, drop through that support, or are we going to bounce back up? So and this is that key level on the range that we need to that we need to correspond with how we're going to play. VIX is not really climbing up anymore. TLT is trading smack in the middle of the range here. All right, big green candle on SPY. So it, that, that, that support zone got bought up again. Let's see how it fails. Man, look at that. Huge buy up right there. No volume, though. There's no volume on this move. So be careful. XLF is green there. VIX is massive sell. So it broke through their levels, came down to uh, 1713 on the VIX. SPY is up to the 34.
Are futures easy to trade? I mean, nothing's necessarily easy to trade. This it's a, it's an opportunity to make money in pre-market. I'll use I'll use future trades in pre-market to take advantage of a situation that obviously you can't trade normal options during their pre-market. So that's why I do it. Yeah, I haven't seen a uh, car stereo repair guy in a long time. It's been a while. That's weird, Corporal. I wonder why. Yeah, get away from Robinhood, man. That, that place is garbage. All right, up to the 34 Qs. All right, I bottomed out here. Futures bounce up 34, and now a uh, little wick forming at the top. I feel you. I feel you. Yep, the way that thing is completely wicked out, it's like one of those things are going to buy it up and dump it. Q's turning red again. TLT's are a little green there. VIX is getting a bounce off of this little big red candle. Because that big buy-up had not much volume. It's uh, one of the smaller candles of the day. Got wicked out. NASDAQ. The ADMA is kind of flattening out here. Right now, the futures are up. Bounced off that 34, came on back down. Uh, volume, yeah. When you have the, when you have the volume that is un, is just unsupportive of the price action, you know it's fake. There you go. He said it. So when you've got big price action, when you've got big price action and not supported volume, especially when it wicks out like this, it's not supported. It's a fake out. That's what you have to be very aware of and careful in buying. All right, I took a put right here. 
with the VIX curling up like there, I think we might get a little upside in the, uh, let me post this one real quick. With the VIX climbing up right here, I think we might get a little downside here. I got 1030, 1040 on here. Not gonna make too I'm not gonna get too greedy with these things because the way things are shaking out and being being crazy. VIX is up here after bouncing off this level. XLK and XLF are both finally starting to turn. NASDAQ is red, increasing selling volume. See this candle is getting bigger. I don't know. We'll see that green, that red candle is getting bought up here. So VIX turning red again. So the VIX here bought off this level here. We got green, green. We got this little candle here that's red. XLK is turned up XLF right now. Is there futures got a nice big green candle there? Well, that's not good. Green candle. Uh oh. So now we got this green candle coming into the uh, the uh, Nasdaq right here. VIX. That green candle got sold off here. I was hoping for this little buy up there in the VIX. That was looking a good bounce to come back up, and then finally dump this thing. Yeah, so you know, market you got to be careful using market orders, especially when the vault when the price is just going crazy, jumping around everywhere like this. You just got to be careful using market orders because if you get a candle that you can get, and you you throw that in there, uh, you can get an incorrect fill. You just don't want that. You want to be very precise with your entries, and that means you have full control over your over your trades. All right, so uh, let's see. Futures rejecting that 34. Spy has got some green coming up. Not quite getting to that 34 EMA. VIX is getting bought up on that red candle there. Maintaining that green upswing. Nice, Lee Rat. Well done. So VIX flipped green. So we had this green upswing here. This green candle brought it back down, and we got another green candle forming there. Uh, bonds are still trading flat there. NASDAQ, red candle up here. The futures right there uh, rejected that 34, came back down, but this red candle is getting bought up. That's not a good sign. Sorry. Right, so. I'm not gonna get let these things get run away. If I if I didn't get the move I wanted, I will exit these things. Uh, red candle there in XLK, XLF, spy, right at that 34. That red candle looked great. Rejected that 34. Vix was on the upswing, but it's getting bought up here. So I'm watching this thing closely here. 
A lot of shaking and baking right now. A lot of shaking and baking. Tech sector, nice red candle. XLF, nice. Oh, it's a big green. K is rounding over. Uh, the next four days, what do I think the market's going to do the next four days? So I think we're going to, you know, I would anticipate some sort of a range that we're going to play in the next few days and then maybe possibly uh, start that round over to that 50 later on in the week, later on in the week. We've reached all-time highs for like a month straight, just going and going and going. There's a lot in the market that's kind of weighing it down. Doesn't necessarily think it's going to bring it down based on news, but there's a lot of catalysts that could weigh this down. And eventually sellers are going to come in and take risk off the table, which we're already seeing. With that increase in bonds, we're already seeing risk come off the table and then uh, bring this thing down. All right, so rejecting that 34, rejecting that 34 again. Let's see if we can maintain this selling volume coming on down. VIX right here at the bottom. Love to see that thing climb as SPY rejects this thing here. So. I don't, Justin. I do not think that, no. VIX is green. Got the Dragonfly Doji here. We're right at the 8 EMA there on the VIX. I got 1010. I got 990, 1010 in the bid ask here on these trades. I'd love to see a flush down to the bottom. Get a little gain on this baby. I'm already up 22% on the day. Love to have a follow on win, baby. Come on. <laughs> I didn't need to be sorry. I didn't need to be, need to be so direct like that. Yeah. So I don't think we're going to rage tomorrow. I think it's going to be kind of, there's a lot of tepidness in the right now because of what's all the weight in the market. You've got Afghanistan, you've got Delta, you've got tapering and talk about with the rates. Plus we're, we've been all time highs. Plus we're at that cyclical where things are, we've, we're, we've got past all the earnings season, all that crap. And now we're at that point where it's time to start coming in. Like sellers need to come make this market healthy again. When you have, Buy, 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 all-time highs all the time. It's not a healthy market. It's all one-sided. There's too much risk. You have to have the sellers come in, bring it back down, and readjust that market value so we can agree on a price. And this is healthy price action. There's nothing wrong with that. VIX is green. Bonds are flat. XLF, red. XLK, still down. The buying volume is starting to taper. We're flipping back. We're we're in a squeeze right now. See these black black crosses. Uh, the candles are red or dark red, bright red, dark red. Uh, we're still in a squeeze right now. Buying volume is tapering, so that's why I'm thinking this looks like it's going to sell, but we're watching closely. Right now, the VIX isn't moving. Green's right here. Red candle on the Fs. Small green candle on the Ks. Big green candle now. Right at the 34, futures starting to climb through. Starting to get uneasy with this position. It was looking good there for a second, but now it's looking bad. First green candle here on the three-minute chart. And we're breaking out the top. Hold on, come back to these things. He was looking bullish right now as they start to follow on these green candles. VIX, another sell-off to rejection. So we didn't get that follow-on with the VIX. The volatility is still, is still falling off here. As big green candles here, we, only, we have the crossover three-minute on the 8 and the 21. <clears throat> Afghanistan, what did I miss? <laughs> my bad, my bad. You don't see the SPS ticker on E-Trade. Uh, let me know if you can't find that. Yeah, there's no volume on this buy up here, uh, although it does look like it wants to climb. So I don't like this. I don't like this look. This looks like a sustained curve look. I was hoping for this rejection off there, but I'm not getting that. 
Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to hold on to these things for a touch longer as VIX continues to fall. It's not looking good, though. I'm going to give it a chance to correct, and then I'm out. Tesla is starting to climb again up here. Facebook, Apple. Uh, Biden's talking about Afghanistan at 1 p.m. today. Is that 1 p.m. Eastern? Let me see. Bonds of red, 34 EMA right there. NASDAQ starts to climb. So this look definitely looks bullish here. And I think I'm going to close this baby out. VIX just popped down, rejecting down big time. Big green candles coming in. Sustained volume on the bullish as this continues to climb. Things are looking way too bullish. Right here on the 50 as the VIX is red and falling off. Uh, futures there. The NASDAQ is on that 21. XLF trading sideways. XLK is up here. Right at that 34 five minute chart. All right, VIX there, uh, XLK. So I want to watch this. The NASDAQ is uh, there, and the futures are rejecting that 34. Spies rejecting right up here. So So the VIX been rejected ever since the 1771. We had this uptrend here. It's sold off. SPY is right at that 34 here, right at the 34. And I am out. <clears throat> so it's through, yeah, it's through that 34. Once it starts punching through the 34 and VIX starts falling off, 
Uh, I am out. Not going to let that one get away from me. Although it's probably going to come back down now because they're ejecting the 34, but I'm not going to let that get away from me. So I'm done taking big losses. So XLK, or XLK is running over there. VIX is at 1698. XLV is there. TLTs is, uh, all right, kind of dipped down a little bit. Right up to 34 and holding. So right here at 34, it's not moving. It's stuck right on there. Q's got this red candle as the uh, VIX is coming down or green candle right there. So I don't like the way this thing was curling up. Volume is dying off here. I'll just re-enter if it does tank, but I just want to take risk off that table. <clears throat> All right, right up here, 821, about to cross up to the upside here. Futures there. VIX is still in the downtrend. It depends. It depends, DW. You have to look at the candle before and after.
Still hovering right there, right at that 34. And just hovering right there. So seeing how this thing's going to shake out, we're right at that 34 there. All right, when I look in the strikes for the daily watch list, what do you look for specifically? Today we're watching the 424s and 22s. What do you strike stand out? All right, I look at the deltas mainly and then the volume of each contract. So I'm looking to kind of see if there's enough volume for liquidity, which most PY normally is. And then the, the deltas reach anywhere from that 0.35-ish to 0.4142-ish range. That's where usually where I hang out, which usually puts me in that 2 to $3 strike range. Yep, anywhere in there. <clears throat> so we've got this little bit of slow little grind up here uh, with this stuff. NASDAQ is red, not really going anywhere at the top of theirs. Uh, futures are still climbing barely. Big healthy green candle. That was a good exit. I know it's a loss, but that's a good exit. So green's still going up. 
Nasdaq's still going up. Futures are still going up. Bonds are still sliding down. VIX is uh, heading on down too. So, So watch this 44521 pivot on the NASDAQ as, or I'm sorry, on the futures as SPY continues to rage, bouncing off of the support level, this buy zone, which we're bouncing off and rejecting, and then coming on back up. That's fine, Chris. Part of it. What do you mean when you say the drill volume, even the price increases, total volume seems to no, I'm talking about I'm talking about the options volume. Like when I'm actually when I'm trying to pick a pick a contract, I'm looking at the options volume to see if there's enough liquidity to get in and out. That's what I mean. So Yeah, XLF, big green candle there. It's throwing SPY up. Qs are green there. NASDAQ is uh, green coming up. We're through the, all the EMAs to the upside. It appears to look bullish on the day. Now we look at calls. Uh, am I going to wait for it to break the top of the range? No, no. I'm just, uh, with this, it's low volume, or I say lower volume. It's still increased on what it has this morning, but uh, we'll see how this, how this shakes out in terms of carryover. Big green on XLF. XLK is doing the same thing. Definitely bouncing off of that buy zone. Gray cross. Where do we see that? Which which time frame? I ain't got that yet. Let's see. I got the five minute chart. Let's make it a three minute chart. I still got dark uh, black crosses there. Oh no, on spy three minute. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, if I see a couple hundred contracts on SPX, I'm happy with that. Like, I don't want to see like 30 or 40 or 50 contracts. It's just too small. So, you know, with my lot sizes, as long as I have three to four to 500 in volume, I'm good. I'm good. I just want to make sure there's enough liquidity to come in and out of these things, which usually is. Nice, Fatek. Well done.
All right, middle of the range, 4, 4, 4, 14. The thing is, not too many buyers have showed up. I mean, they pop this thing back up, but a uh, dollar, dollar and a half, but it, it's still not too much buying volume. On the NASDAQ, buyers are starting to come in, but on SPY, it's just uh, the, the volume is still kind of tepid. Uh, there is a unprotected... Uh, Excel sheet in that resource tab. So the last one I posted is unprotected. Yeah, look in the regular resource channel at the lock resources. <clears throat> Do I have my trading log Excel sheet on Discord like not the like the one that I fill out? Yeah, it's on uh, if you look under trading log, OM trade log, it's got all my uh, entries there.
All right, so we've kind of popped up here, consolidating right at the top of this range. We're at uh, 44432. VIX, not really much else to support except down here, back down to the 15 level. They threw all theirs to blow their EMAs. So VIX is on a straight line down. If you made your goal for the day, uh, I mean, just be caught. Like, you know, it, it's perfectly fine to take your profits and run. Like, don't feel like you need to, that when you start forcing a trade, you start getting like getting that itch to get back in. That's where you start giving back profits. So, like me, like I mentioned to get back in to make up that play, but I know I'm, I'm still green for the day because I've got two trades. So, like, I'm telling myself, I don't have to make another trade. I'm still green. I've still made money today. So, I'm letting this thing do do its thing until there's something obvious that pops out, and then I'm, and then I'll get back in. Other than that, don't force a trade. It's good to take your profits, go enjoy the rest of your day. Don't overtrade. I am I am looking for another trade. Yeah, but as long as it's obvious, I'm not going to force it. You know, I'm good. Uh, you can get an Excel file. I'm not. I'm not going to send you the one with all my data in it, but uh, you can get the Excel sheet. NASDAQ still climbing. EMAs are crossing up, about to have the 2134 crossover. Uh, futures are up to the 4446 level. 4451 is the previous pivot. We had this consolidation earlier today uh, in this mid 444 level, and we're now right at that level. E trade is free. They do charge commissions, though, for uh, options, which is 50 cents. And uh, 50 cents if you trade more than 30 and a quarter. And then uh, 65 cents normal.
I don't. Me too, Strat. Me too. July and June were fantastic. Or the end of June and July, and then all of July was amazing. So I'm ready for some more, uh, more of that. How about under trading? Well, I mean, I guess if you're if you're just missing opportunities left and right, then yeah, I guess that would be considered under trading. If you're just too, if you're too, if you're psyching yourself out left and right, and you're not taking trades under trading, yeah, it's just, it seems like you need to just brush up on your systems if you're under trading, and just tell yourself you just got to make it. Sometimes you just got to do it. Like if you psych yourself out, if you tell yourself you're going to take losses no matter what you do, you can kind of take away that psych out. Because a lot of people freak themselves out. I don't want to trade them or lose money. One, it's position. You have to control your position sizes. So when you do take a loss, it's not that bad. Two, you got to tell yourself you're going to take losses. Just do it. Just make the trade. If you see a trade, if your system tells you to make a trade, just do it. Just take a trade. And I know it's easier said than done, but sometimes you just got to do it. Just, just, just suit up and do it. Otherwise, you'll sit there and look at the screen all day, and then eight hours will go by, and you're like, man, there was like so many opportunities. I wish I would have taken a trade. Just do it. Yeah. I remember that GIF for sure. Quit talking about me, OM. The dude. Hey, the dude abides. The dude abides. GIF or GIF? I know there's a big, there's a big, I know there's a big argument about GIF or GIF. I think we had that argument a while back, but I don't know. Whatever. Uh, in a video you recently talked about, the cycle of spy in, in the next week or so you believe is going to come down a bit. Are you still looking to buy some longer time? Yeah, when I see that, when I actually see that writing on the wall, I will consider some uh, swing puts. I will. It'll probably be a three to four week dated uh, dated put. Anywhere from eight to ten dollar strike away um, away from the strike, and then uh, hold it. Yeah, I probably I, I would look if I had to guess Wednesday, but it really it all depends on the market because we have a lot of obviously heaviness in the market. It is getting bought not on. It's not really that impressive a volume. It's just we're kind of puttering out right here, so we'll see. I do love me some Jif peanut butter, though. That's not political, Remy. That I mean, that's a that's a legitimate question. Uh, do you think we'll get involved with Afghanistan? Do you think so? Here's the thing, man. How do I answer this? Because I can answer this with facts, but it may ruffle ruffle some feathers. Okay. We've been in Afghanistan. We've been in the Middle East for weeks. For I'm sorry, for decades. Uh, there's this facade that we were there. I'm not gonna. Never mind. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not going to go there. Nope. Not going to go there. I don't think he'll get back in just because he made the decision to pull out. He'll probably take some measures to quell what's going on, but I don't think we'll get back in. I'll say that. Suit it and do it. Words of wisdom. <laughs> Suit up and do it. Yeah. Thanks, Night Frog. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. What's up, buddy? Thank, hey, thanks for the super chat as well, man. I appreciate that. 
No, I, I, I backed out on the ruffle. I backed out on the ruffle. Yeah, thanks for supporting the Super Chat Night Frog. Yeah, so uh, suit up and do it. Sometimes you just got to do it. You can't psych yourself out. You can't psych yourself out. Just get it done. It's like, it's like what Michael Jordan said back in the 90s. He said, Republicans buy shoes too. So, you know, not here to ruffle feathers. I'm here to, I'm here to make some money. Calls on Frito-Lay ruffles. There you go. They are delicious. Listening quietly. I love it, Night Frog, Silent Warrior. Can you, t can you talk about the difference between swing trading and scalping? It's just a time frame. Well, you've got scalping, you've got day trading, and you've got swing trading. A lot of people put scalping and day trading in the same category. I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, scalping is like you're looking for quick in and outs, 30 seconds. You're looking for spy to move, you know, cents so you can make 1% to 2 to 3%. You're scalping, you know, you're, you're high frequency trader. You're trading 10 to 15 times a day. You're scalping cents just to accumulate those percentage gains. Whereas a day trader... You're looking to stay a little bit longer, maybe an hour or two. You're looking for the 10, like that's what I consider myself as, 10 to 20% gains, holding a little bit longer. Swing trader, you're, you're holding overnight. You're holding a position overnight. So, uh, yeah, you're looking to do plays that uh, you'll buy, you'll hold it overnight. You're looking for that accumulation over the weekend, over the over the close. Because, you know, we all know that, that stat that since 1993, 100%, 100% of SPY's, of the S&P 500's profits, gains, have come in pre-market hours. 100% since 1993. And I was trading based off that strategy. Uh, my whole strategy from December until January, February was based off that fact because I was nothing, I was doing nothing but swinging. And then March, that kind of fell, it, it got to the point it was 50-50 and I wasn't getting it, I got to the point uh, so it, where it was like, pretty much breaking even if you were to do that. So I went to just day trading, uh, took away the swings. So swing trading is profitable. You just have to play it right. If you know when to enter, swing trading can be very, very profitable. And uh, I'm looking to do that here once we get that downturn. Steve with the $5 super chat. Thank you. Been trading for years. This is the best channel I've ever seen on YouTube. I really appreciate that. What a, what a heck of a compliment. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I'm here to show you guys the real, how this is really done and the real world of investing and trading. It's not about being high energy and yelling and screaming and, and being, you know, crazy. It's not about, you know, 100% win rates, which is complete garbage. It's not about turning a thousand dollars into a million dollars, although it's definitely obviously everyone's goal, but that's not realistic, at least not in the, not in a year time frame. So I'm here to teach everybody the realistic part of trading. Now losses happen, wins happen. All you can do is just move on and and tidy up your system and go there. So, you know, thanks. I appreciate I appreciate the uh, the compliment. I've been lurking since Mario could open, enjoying listening to your your analysis. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that, Austin. Thank you. Uh, do you only do options, or are there are other times when you date when you'll day swing a stock? Like, uh, yeah, I only do options. Ever since I ever since I realized the potential of options i've never looked back now i still try i still buy stocks from my long-term account but i don't discuss that but in terms of swing trading day trading scalping all that stuff it's only options it's just too profitable so am i really going to grind out a three a point zero three percent gain on spy or am i going to grind out 15 percent on profit on the options so china backs taliban we pull out during peak fighting instead of winter which benefits the enemy right, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just reading comments sorry Yep, Kira. Yep. Just nothing short term for stocks. That's right. Yeah, no short term stocks. Do you know, fun tidbit, I don't know if you know about this. My very first options trade, way back in the day, my very first option trade was a 220% win. 
and I was hooked. I was hooked. <laughs> it was it was on an SPY put way back in the day. Nope, it wasn't a big position because I was still get. I was. It was just a small. Like I think it was only like five contracts, something like that, something small. It was way back in the day when I was just, like, hey, what? What are this options thing? I see all these people talk about options. All these rich people talking about options. Uh, so I threw in a couple, like I think it was like five contracts, something like that. And uh, yeah, like two hundred percent. I was like, holy moly! <laughs> it's like no wonder these two straight options. <clears throat> the first one is free. Everybody gets one. Nightfrog, another one. Thank you, man. I appreciate the generosity. Yeah, we all remember our first. We all, I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day. I just happened to catch Spy right like the day before it rolled over. And I, it was like a three-week dated uh, three week dated put. Man, it, it was amazing. I was like, holy crap. Then I, then I thought, oh, man, maybe imagine if this was 100 contracts. Careful, Ace of Check. Careful. <laughs> Green Candle on Q. Spy is still hanging out right there, NASDAQ. All right. Not much going on right here. Uh, NN says, what are the rules for setting the day's range? Is it time-based? It is time-based. That, uh, that is a proprietary range that uh, Veteran Exotics brought to us. And that's the morning ranges from the, it, it starts from market open until 10, 10 05 Eastern time, 10 05 Eastern. And then we have an afternoon range starts that starts at 1330, 1330 to 1405 Eastern. And once the afternoon ranges start, you do not, you disregard, you disregard the uh, morning ranges. Hey, let's uh, let's let, let, yeah, let's bring this to uh, hold on. There you go. Let's bring that in there. That is a heavy subject. I'm curious to see why he asked that question. Why you asked that question? But uh, bring it to the Patreon general chat, please. I don't get your buy alerts from Discord anymore. Uh, make sure you go into... I know a couple of weeks ago we updated where you had to have the options error role uh, because we had a lot of bots coming in here, though it didn't have... That, you know, obviously, bots can't assign roles. So if you go into the Getting Started channel under the Welcome screen, you can sign yourself a role, the options error role, and you'll be able to do that. Oh, sweet, Nene. Thanks. I'm glad I could help it. Double green candles here on SPY, NASDAQ.
when you exit an option, are you filling a market limit? Never do. I never do market. Always do limit. Always do limit. Yeah, night frog. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's the great thing about power e trade though, because you can mo you can hit a mo you can hit modify order, which it like you can update it in a second. So if I do if I do miss a limit, I'll do I'll uh, hit modify. Uh, 1825 Lee rat. Yeah. I, I hold 150 on the rower for that. Uh, I hold 150 and then I try to bust out the, uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the wall balls another two minutes. So the last set was not cause I was dying. Uh, it's just this low volume here. It, it's, it's kind of this little creep up and you see the squeeze momentum is dark green. We're heading back down into the red zone here uh, because there's just not much volume. It's unimpressed. We're just, we, we fell down. We popped up here. This nice little V, V ish. It's like more like a W recovery at the top. Oh yeah, good call, Remy. Good idea, good idea.
Here you go, Remy. All right. SPY Daily Sentiment Play is posted in the SPY Daily Sentiment channel. What's the best time to enter spy puts? Right about three minutes before it tanks. How do you feel about 15 day puts on spy? You wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do about a three week, about a 21 day put. But I'm going to wait until we really get the sell. Until I think we're going to sell. At least, obviously, I don't know for sure. But I'm going to plan a few more days. A few more days. For the long-term deltas, I'm not really looking too close at deltas for those. Uh, I'm more looking at the volume on those things. That's just more telling for that. So when I go for that, when I go for here, let's actually look at it right now. In the event that we're to buy it, let's go to SPY. So let's see. One, two, three. September 6th, somewhere around there was what I'd be. I'd probably do the 3rd, September 3rd. So right now the puts, let's look at that massive open interest, 10.6 thousand on the 435s, 402, 2300 on the 436s. So a lot of people are starting to buy into the puts there. Uh, much lower on the calls. I'll probably do the 435s because that's where I think there's a good chance when this does go down that the 435s will go in the money. Deltas on those are 0.25 on a 235 premium. I know last time, I think on the calls were $1.70 or when I alerted $1.10. Somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in there where I alerted on the three-week last time. So probably in there. I'm looking at the volume closely here. I want to see where the sentiment is. I'm looking, and then I'm looking at the thetas. I'm just take, take a look at how everything looks. Implied volatility on those is 15 which is about normal for those type of drill plays on the puts. Uh, buy some What's the difference between volume and open interest? Uh, volume is the number of contracts traded. Open interest is the amount of active contracts. So active contracts that are being held by traders ready to be traded. All right, so SPY is climbing right back to the top of this range. Would a strangle be wise? I'm not going to do a strangles because I think there's some volatility. Like you can see the implied volatility starting to increase. I think the probabilities of a downside being blown out, I'm not going to do a strangle personally. That's and I'm talking about selling strangles, not buying them. So, or I'm talking about selling strangles, so.
Nice sharp recovery on the NASDAQ. Uh, futures are back up to their pre-market levels. Look at that VIX. The VIX is down. It doesn't want to fall. It's 1665. Uh, touch below the earlier pivot. It is 1117 my time. Usually I come off here about 11. Uh, I'll hang out just a touch longer here, but not too much longer here. Look at that. So look at this. Look at these candles here. So you see big gap down after peaking. This is the one year chart. So this 44264 was heavily defended. Just above it was heavily defended. But this level was be a key level. That, that candle just flipped, just flipped green. Curious to where that's going to go. Uh, this candle here, if we close below this candle tomorrow, I probably consider taking the puts. Uh, we'll wait on there. So I want to see how these candles reflect on the one year. And really focus on my strategy for long-term trades. This is why it's so critical to look at the long-term trades, even if you are a day trader. Don't neglect long-term account, the long-term charts, because you can see how things are going to form on the long-term charts. Do you take smaller trades when the geopolitical unrest? How do you balance risk for reward in these cases? No, no, unless it's something that's really, if, if we're on the brink of something with uh, like a, like maybe a large event, but potentially, but this Afghanistan thing is not enough to get me to play too conservatively just by that alone. Now, we do have the Delta variant, obviously. We do have some concerns in the Asian markets with that. So that I am playing towards that. But everything right now, like I'm not necessarily going to play conservative just because of the of, of that geopolitical unrest. So spies up at the top of the range four 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 fifty eight after a nice bounce four 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 nine two.
what expiration date were you looking at that puts? Uh, I'm looking at the September 3rds for the uh, swing plays. Probably the 435s. Oh, actually, I'm going to post this in the... I've got the OM swing plays. I'm going to post this. It's the uh, September... I sound different? What do I sound different? What happened? <clears throat> Can you see the candle charts for individual contracts on trade view or E-Trade? Yes, you can. Oh, you're talking about... Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> <clears throat> what would be... What would be my main indication to break those? If I see selling volume starting to kind of play, mainly on the one-year chart, if we close below this previous candle, we have if we have like a red, red engulfing candle, that's why I was watching today closely. If we had a red engulfing candle that closes below this low candle here, and we have an increase of buying volume. See, every time you've got this dip, you start you start to see consecutive red volume base coming to play and, and volume then spikes. Obviously, I don't want to wait for this candle. You're too late on the move. But I want to start to see volume start to start to turn red. Now, look, you have buying volume starting to diminish on the one-year chart, just going down, down, down. Smallest green candle of the day so far. Of like This is the smallest green candle we've had. I mean, obviously, it's still halfway through the day. But small green candles the previous two days, the smallest we've had in a very, very long time. The last time we've had the small candle there, I mean, back here, February. So... Uh, the dark green candle here on the squeeze Momo so far. We'll see if we start trending back in there. And that's why I'll give it a few days to confirm. And then once I see the selling volume start to pick up, if we close below this candle, I'll take some puts and swing them. Three weeks. The deltas on these are 25 cents, so... see here 23 that's uh, about 12 percent move 12 percent gain per dollar of spy drop that we get on that With SPY being 444, if we get about a $10 million move, you're looking at it, you know, over 100% gain. No, I had someone just, I had someone unmute their mic and, and ask a question, which is fine. You're welcome to do that. <clears throat> I'll, let my, I'll un, unmute my mic the day I sound tougher than o, OM. Come on, man. Unmute your mic. Ask a question. Yeah, when there's when there's uh, low in the in the action right now, go ahead and ask a question. It's fine. So Q is rolling over. NASDAQ down to the 8. Our futures are up here. 44451 is that pivot. We're right below it. 
from this morning's action. VIX, still on the downtrend. All right, so I'm looking at puts here. Uh, NASDAQ is kind of red there. <clears throat> Futures are right up there, SPY. Bonds. Boom. All right, let's see what happens. Spies top of their channel. Futures, big red there. VIX, let's take a look at the volume here. Starting to end back into, uh, we're still, like, nice big selling volume there, supported. I got 670, 680 on the bid ask. Q's starting to roll over here. Yep, all the same plays, all the same plays. All right, so this red candle is getting bought. <clears throat> Not much, though. Increased volume here, selling volume on the Qs. Um, NASDAQ futures are slight uptick in selling volume. This is getting wicked out. XLF is red. VIX is got this little base for me. I've got currently got 650, 670 bid ask. <clears throat> We're at the top of the range for SPY. We're back to the open price after grinding up all day. No, no, that's a swing. That's my swing play. This is the uh, the twentieth. Uh, I'm looking at that eventually, TJ, but not yet today. Not yet today.
Tesla's down 5% getting killed. This looks like it wants to come down. Let's see, VIX is down here. Uh, what is it? 1663. That's the thing. Like VIX is kind of a no man's land right now. All right, so VIX is looking green. Q's look dumpy. Spy looks dumpy. This candle keeps getting wicked. Bond's starting to turn up. <clears throat> looks like puts could be a play. VIX looks like it wants to turn up here. XLF gapping down. Bonds are starting to increase. Energy's tanking down. XLF is down. We've dropped from, uh, let's see, SPY has dropped from 14... Some 44464 down to, so we dropped 30 cents down to 21 EMI right now. I got 697 on the bid ask. All right, I'm taking this play. Things looks like it wants to roll. Hold on, let me flip over here. VIX is starting to increase. I got $7.705 on the bid ask. Watch this 21. NASDAQ is green on the 21. XLF is coming down. VIX is starting to uptrend. TLT wants to uptrend. Things look like it wants to come down. This little green candle, see how this thing plays out. My finger is on the buy button. And red candle on the VIX. All green candles across the board. 
Let's see how this thing acts on that 21. Yep, for sure, for sure. I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at, uh, what, the uh, 20th, August 20th. Big green popping off that 21. So we're heading back into a squeeze on the squeeze Momo. Three minute. Let's go to the five. Same thing for the five. Three minute is right on this 21. <clears throat> yep, well, I'm disappeared. <clears throat> All right, y'all, I am going to go run and go get some lunch, hop off here. I'm going to be watching this price action closely. So uh, thanks for hanging out this morning. I know a couple of people got some profits on that uh, futures trade this morning and unfortunately had a loss today, but learning experience. We'll see how this day plays out. SPY is currently hanging out top of the range above the 21. It is 12.39, 12.40 Eastern Standard Time. Thank y'all for being here. Welcome to all the new members. Welcome to the OGs. Hang it. How's it going? Uh, I'll still be monitoring the market throughout the day. I'll still be monitoring the Discord throughout the day. So if you have any questions, shoot me a DM at me anytime at Options Millionaire. Uh, and then I'll be happy to answer those as fast as I can. Y'all take it easy. Trade smart. Be smart. Don't FOMO. No mo FOMO. And let's make some money. See you.